Summary of Recitatif by Toni Morrison At the beginning of the story, Twyla says that she and Roberta were sent to St. Bonnie's as orphans because Twyla's mother, Mary, danced all night and Roberta's mother was sick. They don't get along when they are first met. Twyla learned from Mary to be prejudiced against people of Roberta's race, but when she tells Big Bozo, the woman in charge of the shelter, Bozo is rude and tells her to go away. In the end, the girls become close because they understand each other without having to ask questions. The fact that they both get FS all the time brings them closer together. Twyla forgets everything she learns, and Roberta hasn't learned to read yet. Plus, they can't be with the other kids at St. Bonnie's because they're not real orphans with beautiful dead parents in the sky. This forces them to be together. The older girls, or Gar girls, sometimes pick on Twyla and Roberta. The Gar girls wear makeup and look scary, but they are mostly afraid runaways. People of a certain age hang out in the garden and dance and listen to the radio. Though Twyla doesn't know why, she dreams about the orchard a lot. She says, nothing really happened there, except for the time Maggie fell down there. Maggie is an old sandy-colored woman who works in the kitchen and has a lot of different problems. She walks with bow legs that make her rock and sway as she goes. She is mute and may be deaf. The mother of Mary and Roberta comes to St. Bonnie's one Sunday for a church service and lunch. They wear nice clothes and curl each other's hair because they are excited about this. But when Roberta shows her mother to Twyla and Mary, her mother just walks away without saying anything. Twyla feels even worse about herself when Mary doesn't bring any food for them to eat. She wishes she could kill Mary. The story goes ahead eight years. On the throughway, Twyla works at a Howard Johnson's. On one occasion, when the Greyhound bus stops at the diner, Twyla sees Roberta on board with two young guys. There is makeup and clothing on Roberta that made the big girls look like nuns. The women have a short, casual chat, but Roberta seems rude and uninterested, and she laughs when Twyla says she doesn't know who Jimi Hendrix is. But Twyla asks Roberta's mother how she is before she leaves without saying goodbye. She says she's fine, then asks Mary how she is and leaves. Twelve more years have passed since the beginning of the story. Twyla is now married to James, whose family has lived in Newburgh for many generations. They have a son named Joseph. Even though there are a lot of poor people in Newburgh, the city is becoming more upscale and a fancy market has opened. Even though Twyla wants to look around, she is nervous about the thought of buying something. Because her son and father-in-law both like Klondike bars, she decides to only buy them. Twyla runs into Roberta at the register. Roberta is dressed very well, and she tells Twyla that she now lives with her husband and four stepchildren in the rich suburb of Annandale. Roberta tells the two women they should get coffee. In the coffee shop, the women laugh and hold on tight, behaving like sisters separated for much too long. They talk about the good times they had at St. Bonnie's, and Roberta is proud that she can now read. When Twyla talks about Maggie, Roberta says that Maggie wasn't the one who fell in the field, the Gar girls pushed her. Roberta says she knows because she went back to St. Bonnie's twice and ran away the second time, but Twyla doesn't believe her. Twyla talks about the time Roberta ignored her at Howard Johnson's. Roberta says it was because of the race tensions in the area at the time. Twyla is confused because she remembers many groups of friends of different races coming into the diner together, but she doesn't think much of it. There is a promise to stay in touch between the two women, and then they part ways. Twyla says that Newburgh was filled with racial strife that fall over the problem of busing kids to different schools. One day, Twyla drives by a protest against busing by mistake. Roberta is holding a sign that says mothers have rights too. This makes Twyla have to drive back and talk to Roberta. The two women talk about the protest, but their chat quickly turns into a fight over nothing. Some of the women protesting start to hit Twyla's car in the end. She puts out her hand to ask Roberta to help her, but Roberta doesn't move. Roberta says that she is not the same person she was as a child, but Twyla is the same, 
the same little state kid who kicked a poor old black lady when she was on the ground. Maggie wasn't black, Twyla says, which surprises her. Roberta is adamant that she was and that they both kicked her. They call each other liars, and Twyla finally comes back to join a counter-protest. There, she waves a bunch of signs that only talk to Roberta and don't make sense to anyone else. I.S. Your mother well, is written on the last sign, which makes Roberta give up the protest. Twyla doesn't want to come back now that Roberta is gone. Time goes by faster. It's Christmas, and Joseph is now in college. It's time for Twyla to get a coffee on her way back from getting a Christmas tree. She sees a group of rich people in evening clothes near the restaurant and says, it made me tired to look at them. When Twyla walks into the diner, she sees Roberta there. It looks like she just got back from the event at the hotel. Roberta asks to talk to her, and Twyla at first says no, but in the end she accepts. After making small talk for a short time, Roberta tells Twyla something she told herself she would say to her if they ever met again. She says that she really thought Maggie was black, but she also says that she and Twyla never kicked her, they just watched the Gar girls do it. Roberta says that she really wanted the girls to hurt Maggie, which is just as bad. Twyla tries to comfort Roberta when she starts to cry because she thinks Roberta is upset because she is drunk. Twyla makes her friend feel better by telling her that they were both lonely eight-year-olds. Roberta feels a little better, and Twyla calls to check on her mom. Twyla says Mary never stopped dancing, and Roberta says she never got better. But at that very moment, Roberta feels hopeless again, and the story ends with her yelling, shit, shit, shit. What the hell happened to Maggie? About the author. Toni Morrison born into an African-American family that relocated to Ohio during the Great Migration. She has said that her dad's experiences with racism in the South made him hate white people loudly. Young Morrison learned stories from the African-American folktale tradition from him, as well as well-known Western literature works. Morrison got her BA from Howard University and her MA from Cornell. After teaching at Texas Southern University for a while, she went back to Howard to teach. She got married to Jamaican builder Harold Morrison and had two kids with him before they split up. Morrison didn't start writing for real until she was 30 years old and had two kids while also working as a professor and editor. She joined a writer's group at Howard and worked on the story that would become her first book, The Bluest Eye, which came out in 1970 and was praised by critics. Sula, Song of Solomon, and Beloved are some of Morrison's best-known works. She is one of the best-known African-American women writers and one of the most read American authors alive today. Also, she was the first African-American woman to win the Nobel Prize for Literature, which she did in 1993. In her writing, Morrison often includes the voices of children as she writes about race, gender, sexuality, and the family. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.